Hello friends, thanks for tuning in. I'm Big Matt and today I'm going to use this TX x 10 r to uh, demonstrate some uh, checkout procedures that you can perform on these X-Series machines prior to purchasing them. Uh, let's say you find one of these guys on uh, Craigslist or Marketplace and uh, you want to check it out thoroughly before you purchase it. Uh, these are just some of the things that you can do that will uh, give you peace of mind and uh, you'll know whether the uh, unit is fully operational or if it needs a little work. Uh, you can identify what the issues are prior to purchasing the machine. And this uh, avoid, it helps you to avoid headaches when you get the machine home and it'll also help you to negotiate a better price from the seller if you do run into some issues. So we're going to get right into it with this uh, TXX 10 r uh, <clears throat> In a perfect world the seller will have this his unit uh, set up in his uh, home stereo system and he'll have an input device connected to it also that way you can go into forward record and reverse record listen to both of those uh, those uh, recordings on a tape and uh, if it sounds great uh, on both in both directions then you're gonna go put it into fast forward and rewind uh, uh, Make sure that it stops okay. Listen to the uh, 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 inputs and outputs by moving the input and output uh, control knobs. Check for static. Uh, and again, in a perfect world, all those functions are working great. Uh, one more thing, you want to make sure that the pitch rollers are moving up and down freely. And if it's playing okay, uh, if, it, if it plays and records and the forward and the reverse modes okay, all those functions will be uh, should be working. And then you just negotiate, just negotiate the price or pay them full price if you like. But you should feel comfortable that, that your unit is working okay. Outside of that, let's say that you go over to the guy's place and he doesn't know the condition of the machine. Uh, it's up to you to figure out if there are any any faults with it. And this is uh, this is one of the first things that I do when I check out the machines is on these TXX series machines. I want to make sure that that capstan motor is, is operational. So after I plugged in the machine, <clears throat> after I plugged in the machine, the lights come on. Uh, and when you, when you initially turn it on, the view meters will give you a little jump. And uh, that, well, that's the normal uh, process that happens. But after, after that's happened, what I do is I'll raise up the tension arms, both of these guys. And when I do that, I put my ear up to the machine and I should hear the capstan motor spin and it should stop spinning when I release the tension arms. Do it a couple of times. If you don't hear the motor, uh, maybe even take off the case to look down in there to make to see that the unit is, uh, the motor is actually running. Because if it's not running, those capstan motors sell for about 400 bucks on eBay now. You can find them cheaper at times, but the going rate is right around $350, $400. So that's a big investment to make on one of these machines if that capstan motor isn't working. And that's not to say you shouldn't buy the machine, but that's something you need to factor in to the, to the asking price uh, from the seller. Uh, <clears throat> the next thing you want to do, if, let's say the, uh, the capstan motor is, sounds like it's spinning okay. You'll want to load a tape on there to see if the tape uh, plays. Simulate that now. And th again, this is assuming that the guy doesn't have a tape already loaded onto it. And it's a good idea to bring your own tape, or just a 7 inch reel and a take up reel with you. And preferably you'll have uh, some kind of music that you're familiar with on the forward and the reverse sides of the of the tape. So that way when you play the tape you'll be able to listen to it to, uh, to make sure that it sounds okay. Additionally, you don't need to uh, connect it to a stereo or anything like that. Just bring along some headphones and uh, you can listen to the output of the tape uh, on the headphones. So you've got it connected. I'm not sure if this uh, this unit is working or not, but 
once you do, you want to press play. Okay, this one, the capstan motor isn't working. But uh, what this tells me is the pinch rollers engage okay, so the, that operation is working okay. But the capstan motor isn't, either the capstan motor isn't working or this unit needs a belt. And uh, if I would put my ear up to this machine, I know that it has a good motor in it. I probably probably needs a belt or there's there might be some other uh, kind of electrical thing going on with this specific machine because I can't remember if I had taken this motor out or not but uh, <clears throat> for demonstration purposes today uh, let's say that this unit is playing right now I would connect my headphones to this jack and listen to what the what the uh, unit sounds like uh, turn the volume up and down if it sounds scratchy that's not a big deal that's normal if, if they've been sitting for a while but you'll want to use the uh, the output level to uh, output knob to move the volume up and down. After you've played it for a little while, go into the reverse mode and watch the tracking on the tapes too to make sure that it's tracking okay. Uh, listen to it in the reverse also, make sure that sounds okay. And then after you're done with the playback, you know that uh, this playing in both directions okay. Uh, the next thing you want to do is record some music or uh, some sound onto the tape and you don't need to bring a, a cassette deck or anything like that with you you can use a, a cell phone or an mp3 player uh, let's see if we've got and connect to one of these plugs to it this is a 3.5 millimeter jack that goes to uh, an RCA uh, left and right channels. You plug this into the input of your TX and plug this end into your uh, cell phone or MP3 player. Dial up some music, put the monitor switch to source, and then uh, play your music through the uh, through your TX. I can do that on my other phone. And once you do that, you'll see the meters uh, begin to move. Okay, so I've got some music playing right now. Now I can see that the view meters are, are working okay. The next thing I would do is go into record mode. I'd put the unit into the record mode and then press record and play in the forward direction. And then I would release the uh, tape source switch so I'm monitoring what's actually being recorded onto the machine. Uh, <clears throat> If you moving back one step, after I hook up the my telephone, my cell phone to this unit, if I don't see the meters working, and I know that the music's coming out of my my phone, okay, uh, then I know there's a problem with the input circuit on the on the unit. That's that seldom seldomly happens. Normally, it's on the playback side that you're having having problems with with the record, but uh. In this case, it's working good on the on the input portion. I put it to to a tape, play and record, and I should hear something close to what I've got going into the machine after I put it in uh, into the record mode. I'll do that in the forward direction. I'll move up the line inputs a little bit up and down. If it sounds scratchy, that's okay. A little bit of uh, deoxid and cleaning of the, those pots will take care of that. Uh, after I've done it in the forward mode, I'll do it in the, into the reverse mode also, and listen to the this again. Listen to a song that I'm relatively familiar with, 
and listen to the music being played back after it's been recorded onto the tape. And uh, if that if that works okay, that's telling me that uh, the unit is is in fairly good condition, and I'd, I'd be reasonably certain that that it was operational if it did all those functions. You can go through some of the other uh, <clears throat> functions on the machine also. Once it's out of uh, record, uh, go back in, into play mode and check out the uh, the uh, pitch control. Pull this lever out, speed it up, slow it down to make sure that's okay. Uh, the speed switch, you want to make sure it goes from three and three quarters to seven and a half inches per second. And again, if, if any of these functions aren't uh, aren't uh, working as they should, that's when you want to start making negotiations uh, with the seller. And uh, most people are pretty understanding when you uh, just demonstrate to them, hey man, this thing is supposed to be recording when I'm in this position. It's not recording. There's something wrong with the with the record circuits. Uh, either either offer them a, a much lower price or walk away from it uh, because sometimes that uh, the problem of the units not recording like they should is one of the more serious problems on the on these machines okay so so those are some of the things you want to look for before you uh, purchase a TX uh, X series machine uh, again when you go out to look at it make sure you take along a tape and a take up reel uh, you can use a seven inch uh, reel and take up reel uh, try to have some music recorded on the forward and the revert and the reverse side of the tape and something that you're familiar with so you can tell if the speed is off uh, in either direction uh, bring along an RCA cable that you can plug into your mp3 player plug that into the back of the machine and monitor the inputs uh, as, as I demonstrated uh, make a recording in the forward and the reverse mode if if those functions don't work again just negotiate the price because you'll have a pretty pretty good idea about what it's not doing and I've got some other videos out there that uh, show you how to make repairs to those uh, to those faults uh, anything else okay that's that's about it for this TX X series unit again this is the X10 10R same applies for the uh, most of the TX X series machines the 1000 uh, the 2000R's uh, X20s, X700, X7. Uh, yeah, all of those machines pretty much in the same family. The big thing is that capstan motor. You want to make sure that thing is operational. Uh, if it's not operational, you don't hear it running, or you take off the back and you don't see it spinning when you raise those tension arms, uh, I would start by whacking off several hundred bucks from the value of the machine. That's not to say you shouldn't get it, but. Uh, it would, it would decrease the value of the machine significantly because you'd have to purchase another uh, capstan motor. But uh, outside of that, if you have any other questions about some of the things you want to look for, if you, or if you have some ideas about things that you look for on an X-Series machine before you would buy one, put that down in the comment section, and uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Again, I'm Big Matt, and thanks for watching this video.